Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to be taking on this awesome infinite sum right here and interestingly the way we're going to be solving it is we're going to convert it into an integral. So usually in our videos um, I've been taking I take integrals and often will turn them into an infinite sum and we'll evaluate that way but sometimes it's better to just go the other way. Uh, if my voice sounds a little bit weird I've been feeling a little bit under the weather lately so um, that's what that's all about but I think I'm still feeling good enough to make a quick video for you guys, so let's go ahead and solve this awesome infinite sum. Thanks to my people in the Cambridge Integration Server where I got this sum from. So let's go ahead and evaluate it. So a really cool trick that we have when evaluating infinite sums, when you see a factorial on the top and on the bottom, the first thing you should be thinking of is the beta function. And the reason for that is we know that beta of mn Sorry, I screwed that up of m, n. Actually, let's change these letters here because we don't want to have n in here. I'm going to make this m, k is equal to gamma of m, gamma of k over gamma of m plus k. And so if we make this on the bottom here match up with this, and then one of these gamma functions match up with this, then we have a pretty nice representation of the beta function, maybe we're still dividing by a factorial, um, and the beta function can be really easily converted into some really nice and simple looking integrals. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's rewrite this as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of gamma of n plus 1 over gamma of 2n plus 1, just using our rules of factorials. And if we notice, if we take m to be n plus 1, then k will have to just be n so that we end up with this 2n plus 1 on the bottom. So we're going to multiply by gamma of n and divide by gamma of n. And before we go ahead and plug this in, um, I'm going to take out the first term here because as you see we have n equals 0. So if we're going to have gamma of n for n equals 0, that's not going to work out very nicely for us. So I'm going to just go ahead and make this 1 plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of gamma n plus 1 times gamma of n all over gamma of 2n plus 1 and we'll rewrite this gamma of n just as n minus 1 factorial. And in order to make this factorial a little bit easier to deal with we're just going to shift over the index. So we'll make this go from 0 to infinity and then we'll make this uh, n plus 2. This will be n plus 1 and this will be 2n plus 3. And this factorial will just become n factorial, which is very standard in our normal power series. So this is just going to be beta of n plus 1, n plus 2. And we're going to use the beta function representation here, which is that beta of mn equals 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of e, or sorry, no, that, that comes later, <laughs> uh, sine of 2 times n plus 1 minus 1 x cosine 2 times n plus 2 minus 1 of x to x. So once we go ahead and reorganize that completely, we're going to get 1 plus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial times the integral, time, or sorry, 2 over n factorial times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine to the 2n plus 1 x times cosine 2n plus 3 of x dx. Now we're going to go ahead and take these sine to the 2n right here and this cosine to the 2n. We're going to combine it with this n factorial to get rid of our summation here. So we're just going to end up with 1 plus 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Reminder that the power series of e to the x is just x to the n over n factorial, so we're going to get e to the sine squared of x, cosine squared of x, and then outside we're just going to have sine of x times cosine cubed of x dx. All right, let's go ahead and solve this integral. I notice here that we can split this up so that everything is in terms of sine of x times cosine x, uh, except for that last term on the outside right there, so integral from 0 to pi over 2 of e to the 1 4th sine squared of 2x, which 
just using our identities, times 1 half sine of 2x times cosine squared of x dx. And we can go ahead and cancel this 1 half and 2, though I think we're going to be converting this back anyway. So this cosine of cosine squared of x can be rewritten as 1 minus cosine of 2x, all over 2. And you may notice if we look at this cosine of 2x term right here, interestingly, if we look at um, our function about pi over 4, you'll notice that sine of 2x around pi over 4 acts like an even function because it's just the same thing as sine of x around pi, right? And cosine of 2x around pi over 4 actually acts like an odd function because the zero of cosine of 2x is just that x equals pi over 4. So since we have an even function times an odd function, this entire part is just going to go to zero. So we're just going to have 1 plus the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 half. Uh, I kind of screwed that up. We have 1 half times, I'm going to convert everything back into terms of sine of x and cosine of x, e to the sine squared of x, cosine squared of x, sorry for converting and converting back, and then we're going to just have sine of x times cosine of x dx. And we're going to go ahead and sub u equals sine of x, so we get 1 plus 1 half, the integral from 0 to pi over 2, of e to the u squared times 1 minus u squared times u to u. And now we can go ahead and sub u equals, or sorry, v equals u squared. u squared, so we're going to end up dividing by 4 here. I think I missed a factor of 2 here. I'm not exactly sure where, but I'm pretty sure we should just be um, dividing by 2 right here. So uh, v equals u squared, and then dv equals 2u du. So we're going to get 1 plus, uh, this should be 1 right here, uh, 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the v times 1 minus v, all dv, or 1 plus 1 half the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative v squared minus v dv. We're going to go ahead and complete the square so that we can use the error function in our answer. So we're just going to have 1 plus 1 half the integral from 0 to 1 of negative e to the negative v minus 1 half squared um, minus 1 fourth dv. Bringing that to the outside, we're going to have 1 plus the fourth root of e over 2. That's just from this right here. And then we're going to have uh, e to the negative v minus 1 half squared dv. If we go ahead and shift our integral over, we can make this negative 1 half, positive 1 half, and then this is just going to be v squared. Then using the error function, uh, let's make some space. Using the fact that the error function uh, equals square root pi or 2 over square root pi times the integral from 0 to x of e to the negative x squared dx, we're going to have 1 plus e fourth root of e square root pi all over 4 times error function of 1 half minus error function of negative 1 half. But the error function is just an odd function, so we're just going to end up with 1 plus the fourth root of e times the square root of pi all over 2 times the error function of 1 half. So that is our final answer for this marvelous little summation that we converted into an integral. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.